What's up, everybody? This is Urzio 99. Connecting. And today we're going to do another career agent mission path. So let's get logged in. Skill training completed. We completed two skills. Yay! Now we've got business. Advanced military exploration. Let's do exploration. Okay. Same thing. She went in space. Use your sensor overlay. Enable your sensor overlay and look around for a location called Anomaly Training Site. This is a cosmic anomaly, which means it will be easy to find. Warp to it, and I'll give you further instruction once you made it there. Don't worry about combat. This time around, we've cleared out the area for you. Okay. Alright, we're going to go ahead and jump back into the Merlin. We're going to strip the fitting off our venture for now. Put all our modules back on. Undock. Oops. Forgot to accept the mission when I undocked. Docking permission requested. Docking request accepted. It's a common mistake. Everybody does it. Cool. Mission accepted. Okay, now we'll do a bit on discovery. Now, she wants us to find an anomaly training site. And what she's inferring is you see it, this is the sensor overlay. And you can see the green entries are anomalies. So we'll pan the camera. And aside from that lens flare, you can see we've got that's an actual combat site, the drone assembly. There we go, anomaly training site. So we just hold the mouse button over it, warp to within zero. Drive active. Done well. You're now inside a cosmic anomaly. Normally there are hostile ships present, but our people have already cleared the area. All you need to do now is recover proof or discovery document we left there in the training container. You only need a single document. It will serve as physical proof that you pass this test. Once you have it, bring back to me. Okay. So, 11 kilometers away. There's a, the cargo can. Drive active. <coughs> Docking permission requested. Now, the later parts of this tutorial are 
or some of the things that used to drive people nuts. Docking request accepted. I think the most the most views I've had on my channel were my exploration tutorials. So yeah, I went. Here's your slip of paper. Next. Okay. The sensor overlay tracks cosmic anomalies. Other types of sites and collectively called cosmic signatures will be much harder to find and you'll need to boost your overlay by using scan probes. These cosmic signature sites contain various kinds of treasure, ancient ruins to sift among, secret data facilities to hack into, exotic gases to collect. There's a great deal out there for an explorer to uncover. You just need to understand how to react to each type of site. Therefore, before we send you off to do a complete scan, we'll potentially risk your ship in, in an ensuing discovery process. I'm sending you to a training facility where you'll encounter safe examples of what you might find out there. Use the ship I'm giving you, follow the instructions you're given on site, and report to me when you're done. They're giving us a bantam, and we'll make money. So, they gave us a bantam. So that's another way to short circuit the uh, industrial mission we did is just to use this feed it this bantam when you get done with the exploration arc. Okay. Now we need to make it active. Now this was, the Bantam was, way back in the day, the Kaldari mining ship. Before the venture was created, the empires all had their own dedicated mining frigates. But now, we have the venture and these, these vessels have become uh, ships for remote repair. They provide, they're basically the healers of EVE Online. Okay, these are getting annoying. If you ever see these, like especially around school stations, you'll see these, these are all just containers where people drop them with messages like, Hey, this random corp number 9 million is recruiting. It basically just clutters up the space lanes. It's crap 90% of the time. <coughs> A few of them are in, of course, foreign languages, you know. This is a worldwide game, so as you can see, we got a little Polish, we got some Cyrillic, so Russia, some more Cyrillic, uh, Deutsche, German. That's all well and good, but and you can see we've even got, I can't tell if that's Chinese or Japanese, but it's definitely not uh, doesn't look like Korean but what do I know so what we're gonna do is you can see that the item type here we're gonna remove mobile depot from overview we're gonna right click and remove secure cargo container from overview and things cleaned up rather nicely and someone wants you to me to join their fleet Plastic planet? No. Never. Yeah, I see him right there. Council diplomatic shuttle. Yeah. He's got a rare item, yet his account is less than a day old. Yeah. <laughs> That's somebody looking to gank people. So, anyway, we have a job to get to. Warp drive active. Turn here. Let's 
Spastic planet. I really wish I knew what did that. It's just like most of the time I and Doc, I get the, the flashy planet. Like the whole planet's like having an epileptic seizure. Okay, and we got a message from Ryan Ruli uh, Soren from Erikin Moon One Sisters of Eve Academy. Greetings, pilot, and good work finding your way here. My name is Riolatos, and I work with the Sisters of Eve as an advisor for CAPS leaders in training. Although we'll be offering you advice as you go along, don't forget to need to report back to your own agent. You've arrived in the staging pocket of our training facility. Ahead of you is an acceleration gate. These powerful structures are able to fling your ship thousands of kilometers forward and deeper inside. In order to operate them, you must be within 2,500 meters and activate the gate. Now, the re yeah, the reason that they have these gates is because this is technically what is was called a dead space pocket. Warp drives don't work in this area of space for for unknown reasons, so a lot of times pirates will use them because they can't be directly warped in on. So it provides a way to defend the installation like we saw on the combat mission where we destroyed that, uh, the final military mission where we destroyed that station. Because you can't warp directly to it, you have to progress from gate to gate, which gives the enemies opportunities to lay ambushes. Then of course we have the agent's industrial ship and the acceleration gate. Warp drive active. Okay, that's it. Good work. You'll find acceleration gates like these in many sites you uncover. They will connect you to other pockets, often taking you deeper within a complex. You're now inside a supply area. Before we show you the different types of sites, we'll provide you with equipment you'd normally need to find them. Over in the distance is a cargo rig named Exploration Supplies. Inside it you'll find two pieces of equipment. A core probe launcher and eight scanner probes. Take them both. Okay. Probably should have put an afterburner on this thing. Oh well. These aren't aren't that big, so. <coughs> and there's that guy again spamming recruiting and local. Okay, we also picked up an analyzer, a data analyzer, and a relic analyzer. We will need those too. Okay, now, although the sensor overlay can find cosmic anomalies, it cannot get a good reading on cosmic signatures. Signatures are an entirely different class of hidden sight. To be able to warp to them, you need to scan, use scan probes. Scan probes are deployed like firing a missile, but by fitting a scan probe launcher, loading the scan probes, and then firing them into space. Think of scan pros as little ships. They have built-in scanners just like yours, except theirs. these can reach out to 32 AU. You launch multiple probes at a time in formation to maximize efficiency. They are even equipped with warp drives so you can position them around a solar system without having to move yourself. As you might imagine, using probes like this cover a much larger area of space in a faster time. You'll also find a couple of civilian modules in the supply crate. Civilian data analyzer, civilian relic analyzer. You will need these modules in later missions when you learn about some of the things you can do in the sites you find. You should fit them to your ship at the same time you fit the probe launcher. Take the probe and launcher and civilian analyzer modules and head into the third pocket. I'll show you what a data cosmic signature looks like. Warp drive active. Whee! 
Okay. You're now inside what a data site might look like. Data signatures are found when your scanner detects an area of unnaturally high electronic interference. Electrical activity is a telltale sign of communications facilities, data storage hubs, and similar areas. An enterprising CAPS leader like yourself can train in the art of hacking and bypass security systems of these complexes to get at the valuable items and data hidden away underneath. There are many scientific and technological resources that can only be found this way, such, a unique, such as unique blueprints and decryptors. In order to infiltrate these systems, a capsuleer needs to train the use of train to use data analyzer modules. When you're ready, head to the next point, which demonstrates what a relic, how a relic site might look. And it's basically like she said. Uh, typically, a data site will be, for example, a data storage assembly, communications arena areas. In null in a uh, in known space high security, low security, null security, they typically aren't defended. You'll see some, they'll say like Grista's data node and you just warp into it and there will be all this stuff here and there'll be special cans that you'll use the data analyzer module to hack to gain stuff. Wormhole space, however, is a different story. Those, they have sites uh, there that are guarded by the sleepers. So they're pretty dangerous. But here in K-Space, typically a data site, the worst you'll have to deal with is competition Earth from drive. someone Earth who Earth found Earth. the site the same time you did. Then we go off to the relic site. Scan probes can also find relic signatures. These special signatures are found when your scanner probes detect an area with man-made structures but little to no electronic activity or heat signatures. Typically these sites represent ruins or abandoned areas. You're not just a starship captain. With the right training, capsuleers like you can become archaeologists too. You have the ability to retrieve valuable items from ancient ruins in space without ever leaving your ship. To recover items in this way, you need to train the use of the Relic Analyzer module. This advanced piece of equipment allows the pilot to quickly sift through ruins and recover anything of value. When you're ready to continue, use the gate to move to the final pocket, a gas site. <coughs> and it's just what it says. It's basically, you'll see derelict ruins or odd, you know, old broken down dilapidated cathedrals bits of industrial debris like this. So, use the modules, and that's how you can uh, gain salvage, primarily, besides uh, salvaging other ships that you've destroyed. With a salvager module, you can also go to these sites, and you can have a potential to pick up advanced Salvage. Warp drive active. This area represents what a gas site might look like. Gas signatures are found when your scanner detects an area where gas clouds have collected into harvestable clusters. I should perhaps point out at this point that the clouds found in these areas are used to make drugs known as boosters. Not all of them are illegal, of course, but the entire booster industry is quite shady. The type of booster you can make is determined by the type of cloud you found. There are two broad types of clouds to find, Mycosaracen and Cytosaracen. Of those two cloud types, there are eight individual flavors to find. I won't confuse you with too many details right now. All you need to remember is that the gas sites have gas clouds and these gas clouds can provide the raw materials to make boosters. In order to extract the material from a cloud, a capsule needs to train to use gas cloud harvesters. That's the last area you made it through the training complex. Hopefully from all this you learned a few things. You should report back to your agent. Okay. 
So yeah, um, you can see these various clouds of different colors. Of course, these aren't actually harvestable. As you can see, there's no nothing in the mining overview. But she did make a point about boosters, which I'll touch on briefly. Boosters are exactly that. Crash is an example of a booster. Essentially, these boosters are injectable versions of and kind of modified versions of the civilian stuff we found earlier. For example, we found uh, the human version of Drop in a previous video when we destroyed that narcotics warehouse. This is the version that is available for capsuleers. And of course these these drugs do have benefits and but the stronger your version of the booster you take you run the risk of having drawbacks. For example synth drop this is the legal the quote-unquote legal version of drop that is made with as you can see uh, see input materials As you can see, it uses mycosaracin and garbage. <laughs> That's what you're putting in your body. Gas and garbage. Okay. But that's the legal version. The more powerful versions, standard, improved, and strong, are technically at the time they were considered illegal boosters and you had to smuggle them in high security space. As you can see these use in this case cytosaracin. So that's the difference. Most people will never harvest gas in any meaningful way because Drive. Unless you're in the booster trade, there's no real reason to. There are gas pockets in wormhole space that contain um, fullerene polymers, and those are used in the cons construction of advanced Tech 3 ships. So. Docking permission requested. A Docking request wormholer may have occasion to use gas harvesting, but most people won't. Yay, we're done. Request mission. Data site scanning. Okay. Now you'll start scanning for each type of cosmic signature, something you can only do with, with score, core scanner probes. First step is the data site. You'll need to fit your ship with a data analyzer and probes and go find something, hack the can, and bring us back the proof. Okay. All right. Open up our badger. Fit, fit, fit. I'm not going to repeat the mistake I made earlier. I'm going to fit an afterburner to this puppy. <laughs> now in high security space, cosmic anomalies can be fairly difficult to find. 
just because there's so many people out there running them. In the school systems, it won't be that difficult. So, reload our core scanner probes. All right, now to begin scanning. Just click this button here, scanners. We're going to go to probe scanner. And this is the SAR system. The, the red circles are the general area where anomalies can be found. So we're going to click here. here. Launch probes. Now we're going to move the probe size to 8 AU. Uh, make sure they're in a pinpoint formation. And we're just going to Remember, we have to. We're using a 3D plane, so want to try and get it on the center as close as you can, and hit analyze. Your core probes will, should warp away, like mine just did. Looks like we got a gas draining site. Not what we're looking for. Let's try this one. There we go, data training site. So we can click the warp drive active. Training area. Close this overview. Call in our probes. And reload. I love how you might ma magically get them back even though you're in warp. Okay. You're doing well. Now you're inside the training. Let's use the data analyzer. Okay. Well, let's see here. It says use your just to unlock it. You'll find the proof of discovery document you need. You can expect to find all kind of useful resources and it relates to a process known as invention, a research method that allows you to create more advanced equipment and missiles known as the Tech 2 category. Tech 2 variants of the modules and ships are often far more powerful and many Tech 2 ships possess unique abilities. The skill books you would need to train in order to invent can be found in these sites. As can the materials required to begin research. For inventors, data sites are particularly valuable. Yes. Um, for To build most advanced uh, ship and weapon designs you actually have to invent the Tech 2 blueprint copy. I've got a few older videos on my channel about invention and other aspects of industry if you're interested. But now, lock up the container, click our data module, and begin the mini game. As you can see when I when I click a new node the number shows up that's the distance
that's typically the distance between a the node and a beneficial item or the core. Now it does the training the little mini game you do have health and the civilian analyzers aren't really that strong but this is just a training site so it's not drive active. That, that that big a deal. If you do get if you do get kicked out because you your little virus loses all its health, you can just scan the container again. However, in actual relic and data sites, if you fail twice, the container blows up and you lose whatever was inside. So make sure if you're gonna if you're gonna make a career out of this, you want the best. best stuff for the job. Okay. Use scan find a relic site. Scan it. In general, relic site is very useful for producing ship rigs, special enhancements permanently fitted to individual ships. Now we've got to find a relic site in the void. Let's try over here. Get a nice big broad scope. Analyze. Training, look, training site, yay! Warp drive active. That was quick. And like I said, these signatures are very, very easy to detect <coughs> because you're working with someone with practically no skill in no exploration skills and you're using a ship that's not bonus for it. And now inside the relic container you should use the relic analyzer to access its contents. As you approach containers I'll offer you more information about what you would normally find. Good thing we packed that afterburner. Go. This is the relic content. In order to access the content, you need a civilian relic analyzer. Normally, you expect to find all its useful resources inside. Resources when analyzing relate to production of special equipment known as rigs. The skill books you need to train in order to produce rigs can be found in these sites, as can the materials and blueprints actually required to make the physical product. For rig producers, relic sites are particularly valuable. Uh, the sites do uh, sometimes contain. Tech 2 blueprint copies for rigs. Okay, here's our mini game. We have 25 health. We do 10 damage. And then we have a little space here for little buffs we can get that we can dig up. Ooh, an enemy. Okay. 
As you can see, uh, the nodes near him are grayed out. So we have to go around. And as you can see, we're getting further away. So he's guarding the core. Okay, there's the core, 20 health, 15 strength, uh-oh. Yeah, if you would have hit us one more time, we'd have been toast. We'd have had to start over. Yay, discovery! Warp drive active. Now the... Besides uh, the Tech 2 blueprints, occasionally you'll find Tech 2 Salvage, which is worth mucho money. It's basically stuff you would get from salvaging an advanced ship. So it tends to be pretty rare and pretty expensive. Docking permission requested. Docking request accepted. Complete mission. Okay. <coughs> Here's a mission for Super Summon New Caliber. In your last assignment, you scan down a gas cloud. We created an artificial cloud pocket for you. While you'd usually reap it with a gas cloud harvester, our only concern is that you make it through the secondary and bring back the proof of discovery. But as soon as you, this is the mission, we'll provide you the pass key to the second area. You begin at a gas pass key, we'll get a hair on, and 85,000 isk. Okay, so this mission, we were, we're given a key. As you can see, the gas pass key, make sure that is in your ship's inventory, and on dock. Plastic planet. We'll pop open the probe scanner once again. Hey, I got a gas training site scanned already. Warp drive active. That's easy. I, re I remember when you docked in a station, you lost all your exploration results, you had to scan everything over again. Thankfully, they've changed that. I think you still lose them, though, if you leave the system. But if you dock at a station, you'll keep it. <coughs> okay. You're almost done. You're now inside the gas training area ahead of you. You should see another acceleration gate to access the second ream. You need to have the pass key or agent placed in your item hanger, which we do. Warp drive active. Okay, there's our one gas cloud. Yay, discovery. Warp drive and that's active. it. As simple as. Docking permission requested. Docking request accepted. Okay. Complete the mission. We get a hair on. Yay, we're done. Okay. Now that we've done that, 
we'll go ahead and cover a little bit. As you can see, the hair on its bonuses are geared towards, as you can see, core and combat scanner probe strength for every point of Caldari frigate. 5% reduction in salvage duration, plus 5 plus bonus to relic data analyzer virus strength. This is essentially an exploration ship. It's a Tech 1 exploration ship, but its bonuses are geared towards exploration. Now, me personally, I prefer its big brother, the Buzzard. The Buzzard is a Tech 2, as you can tell by the two in the corner. A ship, it's called a Covert Ops ship. As you can see, much more bonuses, much more skill point intensive, much more expensive ship. See, 20% reduction in cloaking device CPU requirement. Bonus to, 20% bonus to core and combat scanner probe strength per level, so if you get Covert Ops to 5, that's a 50% bonus to your course to your signal strength which makes it much easier to find sites because you'll be able to resolve them faster the 10 percent reduction in time required for scurvy probe scans which is for moon mining purposes but essentially you launch a survey probe at a moon it lands takes samples beams you the data back so not really relevant for most people. Very few people in the game will actually ever use survey probes. Then we have some combat bonuses. A kinetic light missile and rocket damage, light missile and rocket damage rate of fire. But those aren't really relevant. Then we have the roll bonus. 10 bonus to relic and data analyzer virus strength. Can fit covert ops cloaking device. That's the big puppy right there. The Covert Ops cloaking device is exactly what it sounds like. You press a button, and as long as there's no object within 2,500 meters of you, you become invisible. You can still move at full speed with the Covert Ops cloak. But the other variations for example, you can see here the prototype cloak and the improved cloak. You can you can only move at 25% of your speed, and you can't warp while cloaked. A covert ops cap capable ship with a covert ops cloak can warp while cloaked. This is a must-have for an explorer because as you move from system to system, scanning the system, you're typically going to be parked off a of Stargate just there. With the Covert Ops Cloak, you can just set yourself to fly in a random direction, hit the Covert Ops Cloak after you've launched your probes, do what you got to do, warp to the site, and begin doing your business. Of course, you can't use modules while you're cloaked, but it's a good way to skulk on enemies. Uh, Covert Ops cloaks are very powerful tools. Unfortunately, Alpha accounts can't use them. But if you're willing, if you want to make exploration your full-time gig, it'd be worth it. But that'll cover that for now. I'll probably do a more in-depth video on exploration on one of my main characters. That's an Omega and has all that has the SP. But for now, I am Merzio99, and I will see you next time.